Hello, friends. My name is Maximus, and I'll be your dungeon master for this evening. I'd like to welcome you all to the 38th episode of Casters and Cantrips, where some of your favorite streamers play Dungeons and Dragons live on Friday nights. I'm joined by the amazing cast of Bunny Dreadful, Mac and Cheese, please, Virtual Spectre, and Moves Like Jagger from the GG and crew. It's been a hundred years since we played D&D, so <laughs> if I'm a little rusty on the rules, you'll have to forgive me. I forgot how to play. Like I can't wait for this recap, because it's been a while. <laughs> I need it. I, I struggled a little bit writing it, because normally I, I skim the episode and then rely on like what just happened in my brain. I couldn't do that this time. <laughs> I was like pouring through my notes. I was like Charlie from uh, It's Always Sunny, like putting stuff together, figuring out what happened. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm happy to be playing again. So how do I do this? How do I be a DM? How do I host a stream? I don't know. We'll wing it. First off, glad you all are here. Hope you had an amazing, uh, break. And, uh, I know that we did, um, we planned on coming back last week, but, uh, me and bun were not feeling well. So we, we pulled the rip cord and decided to punt it for another week. So, um, sorry about that, but there are. We were in no condition <laughs> to be playing, so I'm glad that we're starting to feel uh, better now. Uh, but first thing is, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I don't know where you were. Man, I hope Sandwich doesn't unplug my computer because she's sniffing it. <laughs> That's not a place you should be, little girl. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen, uh, we do have some uh, new-ish merch for Sweet Justice. You can go ahead and find that on castersandcantrips.com. There's a nice little button up there for merch. Uh, and if you are curious where that website is, it's castersandcantrips.com. There you go. I thought I had a button for it, but I trust you all to type that in. And if you don't, I'm going to hit the socials button and then yep, there it is. Boom. I prepared myself previously. That doesn't make a lot of sense. But anyway, <laughs> we've got some awesome merch Max, for Sweet Justice. Are you sure you're feeling better? We're winging it. This is me winging it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, aside from just new our merch on there, we also have links to all the previous podcasts as well as the episodes on the site so you can catch up. Uh, there's even my written uh, recaps, uh, spell checked and all for each of the previous episodes. So if you want to catch up and read what's going on, you can do that pretty easily. Um, also, if you haven't seen yet, we do have a Patreon there in the chat. Also, patreon.com slash caches and cantrips where you can get some cool rewards. Um, like, well, for one, being able to get early access to the podcast or the VODs, depending on your tier. And there's even a tier that will let you help me make an NPC in our very own game world. And we can collaborate together and pretty much do whatever you want. I'm, I'm open to most things as long as it doesn't break my game. So uh, that's all, all so super fun. And uh, since last time we talked, uh, our podcast is almost up to 750 views now. So I appreciate you all uh, listening either at home, on your drive, or... Those few of you that are that are working out and listening to catches and cantrips, there has to be at least one person, right? That just every time we roll a twenty, they're just doing an extra set or something. So I believe in you all. <laughs> yeah, all the ear views uh, <laughs> on the podcast. Um, also, uh, we have a TikTok that I'm posting all the silly shit that these people say during the episodes. Yeah. So make sure to check that out, catches and cantrips on TikTok. Um, it's linked on castersandcantrips.com all it's all there everything you need there on that one site um but also if this is your first time listening or if you've forgotten we like to make sure to alert all or alert to mute all of the alerts and bells and whistles normally seen in streaming environments so it doesn't uh break your immersion for this uh D&D campaign but we do see them in chat and then i do see them and go through and appreciate all of you um for doing that following subbing all those different things supporting us so I definitely appreciate it. I think that's all I have to say. Does anybody else have anything to say? Because I think I've ran out of things. Uh, according to my so list. Say something. I, 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 just, I miss you guys. I miss, uh, you know, we hang out weekly and then we, we didn't for a long time. And now I'm glad we're all back. Yeah. It's lonely. Good to be back. You're so glad we didn't play last week, though. It would have been... He would have killed us it all was, on accident. It was like Thursday evening, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta prep. She's like, we're not playing. I was like, okay. I was like, it's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> oh, another main thing is that congratulations to Sweet Justice for leveling up to level eight after defeating level the rock. So they've eight. selected all of their uh, new bells and whistles for uh, for their uh, new level. Get ready level, for so. it. 
Yeah. We're extra so excited. Justice now. Yeah, extra justice extra sweet. Um, however you want to put it. But I think we're good to go now to uh, get go ahead and settle in. I'll put my DM cap on uh, for tonight's, tonight's episode of Casters and Cantrips. Our story last left off with Sweet Justice once again having breakfast at the Baba's Cottage. While eating their latke pancakes, the group discussed with Annalise about her time in Salon. They learned that Salon um, was described to her as a place where people could actually care about her and embrace her magical abilities. She grew up on the streets of Tamantir, the capital of Ram Crown. And at some point in her childhood, someone from Salon came to her and presented her with a similar game that Vin had played. Although, notably, Annalise selected the small fork out of the items laid in front of her. After she selected that particular item, Annalise was invited to the capital of Salon, known as Kular Halas. Throughout her story, Anna described a fantastical, magical metropolis where she studied magic for several years, but decided that it was time to leave Salon and travel the rest of the world to see what else was out there. The group told Anna that Salon, in more recent history, had been kidnapping magic users and bringing them back against their will. They also told her about their friend Ixius Zolera, the arcanist, who had been taken by agents of Salon. This was all news to Annalise, of course, when Sweet Justice, Sweet Justice attempted to recruit Anna to help them infiltrate Salon, she strongly declined. However, she gave them some information of possible places that they could enter that region if they so chose. After answering the rest of their questions and interrogations, she made her way to Five Winters, as she called it, a city nearby. Known as Four Winter, <laughs> is how it's actually called. After spending one more night with the Babas, Sweet Justice made their way to Ron's village. During the first night in the forest, while keeping watch, the group was visited by a patrol of elves. They were the same elves that had warned the party early in their adventure not to travel any further west in the Tyran region. They believed something was rampaging in the region, possibly an army or some other force. The leader, Sidri, explained that they were Twilight Wardens from the city of Ephrion. They were investigating the region for other villages and hamlets that had been destroyed. Sweet Justice agreed to allow the Twilight Wardens to join their investigation of Ron's village. As they were traveling, Valken and Ron noticed a bird heading towards the party, and it slowly became bigger and bigger and bigger as it got closer. The large bird, which is now known to be a rock, was diving at the party. The rock repeatedly swooped down, picking off members of the group. However, Sweet Justice didn't allow anyone to die on their watch. After a long, hard-fought battle, the group was finally able to bring the rock down as it crashed into the trees. Strangely though, the creature began to immediately start to deteriorate at a rapid pace. Small pieces began to break away from the rock, causing it to dissipate into a large pile of ash. An oddly familiar aroma permeated the air around the rock, and arcs of electricity could be heard in the pile of ash. An explosion of electricity emanated from the same ash, revealing a large bird-like creature made entirely of electrical energy, just as large as the rock. This creature immediately took to the sky and streaked across the horizon. After the battle, Bryn tended to Ron to keep him from succumbing to his wounds. And that is where we will begin our session this evening.
So we're picking up right there in the battlefield. I think we discussed about getting away from the scene and started moving at the very end. Yep. So you okay. have all this is immediately after the fight with the rock. And what time of day is it? Oh boy. Um, it is a uh, day o'clock. We'll say midday. Midday. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to make sure if it was like nighttime or <laughs> no, not nighttime yet. <laughs> okay. Um, Actually, I want to make everyone uh, known to this as we break immersion just a little bit. <laughs> the reason why I paused when I was giving the recap is I saw that Bun messaged me. I was like, oh, it must be important. <laughs> and she was like, can I order cheeseburgers? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd put you on blast for that one because I think it's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> Look, cheeseburgers are really important. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah, I was going to say that's pretty. Yeah. Important. Yeah. It's important. Anyway, uh, sorry. <laughs> speaking of cheeseburger, Ron's very tired and Ron not f doing too well, so we sh Ron, we should leave before more birds come. You see uh, a couple of the Twilight Wardens sort of attending to their wounds as they were absolutely devastated by this rock attack. Um, they're doing their best they can to bandage um, the two that were repeatedly downed, I believe. Uh, from the creature and Sidri says I'd recommend that as well that we leave the area as soon as possible and find cover because we well we won't be able to withstand another attack like that yep. disagreed let's go Ron here let me help you and I'm gonna you know put it even though Ron's bigger than me I'm gonna do my best to kind of oh, so lift him up lower there you go yeah, I'm kind of like using my, my arms and my full strength to kind of lift you up a little. Falcon's <clears throat> still charred and like smoke's coming off him. Um, How far are we from the right bodies? behind you? <sighs> I healed you all with a tonic last time, right? So I can't do it again, I don't think. What would yeah. you ask? What would Ron ask? How, how far are we from the Bobas' uh, cottages? Far. You've traveled uh, an entire day slept got interrupted by elves and then travel another half day so you were literally about right in the middle between the babas and i think your village from what i understand let me do some quick math here to, to do some distances but i think that's about right well do you guys want to take a short rest you're looking pretty beat up uh, if we can find cover yes you should not be in the open. Yeah, here's probably not the best spot. What's the plan? Looking for cover? Um, can I start looking for maybe like a... Something that's going to give us more cover from the sky, like like a cave or like a, like a really thick copse of trees kind of thing? And start looking for some even just like a like a cliff side that we can kind of build a little bit of a place to get a short rest would be good sure Make or me a long a rest maybe, roll. okay is this perception can help too is she, is she uh expert at the wilderness is she not oh it's survival <sighs> Shit. yeah can she do it and i just assist her, <laughs> her plus her. me uh cedri cedri oh, but vin would also have me helpful vin, yeah oh, as well up to you all Whoever? I'm just gonna assist someone, I think, because my one's not like that. I'll do it. Go for it. You need survivor roll. Go for it. I'll assist. Oh, assist. Here, let me roll. Yes, another. you got advantage. Are you trained in survival? I sure yeah. am. Oh. So 17 plus five. Ooh. You could easily find um, somewhere for you to get a little bit of cover. Um, we'll say that it is a, a sort of an escarpment or an embankment that you can kind of get um, next to. Not really quite a cliff, but you've got one side of the area covered. Not really any caves in this particular area, but you've at least got some cover from above with the trees as well. It's a nice find here. This will do for now, yes. Oh, has anyone seen such 
terrifying but majestic beast. It, it came from carcass. I don't think what's beast is bird. something magic. It is not normal. I have seen these rock in the areas here many times from my youths. Never such a thing as this. Ron has heard legend of bird who rises from ash and reborn, but never lightning, but usually fire. I am not from this area, so I'm not really sure what's normal and what's not normal. Vin is definitely not normal. <gasps> what's that supposed to mean? Oh, but good way, Vin. Good way. Not, uh, not bad. Hmm. Uh, unique. Ron means unique. I guess. I'm feeling a little weird, but I don't know. Maybe a good sleep will clear my head. I can't wait till... Uh, we can finally just rest for the night. Agreed. So it's up to you all. You can certainly take a short rest here if you'd like. Um, you can't take another long rest until it's nightfall. So you can either decide to yeah. stay where you are for the rest of the day or continue on. No, I think we should do a short rest and then continue to put some distance. Yes, I would love to spend it. <laughs> yeah, please, everyone, spend the hit dice. I'll be honest, Max, and I, I don't want to be a cheater to your pumpkin eater. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I got hit from that rock because when I added my new hit mm -hmm. points, it made me full. Oh. And so mm. I like I don't remember if I was hit or you not. You did not get hit, I don't think, because okay. you were ranged, and the other two, the people that got messed up was Ron and Falcon and Brit. Because we were all like in the there. Thing. If, if I yeah, remember you were, correctly, yeah, you were. <laughs> um, listening back through the episode, you said the same, something along the lines of, I'm fine, I didn't even get hit. So I think that you're right. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Because I was like, why am I full when everyone else is dying? <laughs> like, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> Little bit get of a, raged, no. <laughs> uh, hit dice question. It says one day plus two. For every dice I roll, do I add plus two to that dice? Yeah. Or is it just plus two at the end? For each one. Each one. Okay. And just uh, be reminded too that you can spend as many hit dice you want. When you take a long rest, you only get half of them back. So if you have right. eight, you only get four per long rest. So. Remember the dice, yeah. So you all are free to uh, spend hit dice at your... Oh, it doesn't roll for you? Okay. Ooh, Max, these new dice are tasty. Mmm. So good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm sure if everyone saw but if you don't follow us on socials, Max uh, gave us a little lovely Christmas gift of... Yeah some casters and carrots dice. Yeah, the dice are beautiful. Yeah, I need to ask you, Max, where you got these from, because yep. I definitely want to make some custom dice. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'll let you know later. They're delicious, delicious candies. Uh, yeah, don't, Wait, don't eat them. they're edible? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I guess anything's edible if you try hard I enough. Would Please like don't to eat, eat your dice. <laughs> I've been known to eat a dice or two. Anyway, so you complete your <laughs> oh. short rest. Um, anything you all would like to do or discuss before you uh, head on into the wilds? Um, um yeah. Well, could uh, run. This big bird beast lightning monster could be thing that... Uh, destroyed village, no? Uh, Ron does not believe. Because we found the burrow, yes, and it has mm. singe, like fire. But mm. uh, lightning doesn't uh, singe. Oh. It, uh, lightning is... Oh, lightning uh, 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 singes. It sets things Falcon, on fire when yeah. it hits it. Falcon, like, points to his body that's still smoldering. <laughs> yes. I think it singes just fine. <laughs> oh, then. Oh, maybe, Ron. I'm sure that... <laughs> 
Well, I can, can say I, with can, can I confidence. Can I roll, Max? Sure. What do you want to find out? Maybe this could be it, the, the beast? From what you remember, it was fire. Flames. Okay. Um, though lightning can cause those sort of, like a fire in general, this is not um, what you remember. Oh yeah, Bryn, this is not uh, to Ron's memory, but this this is different. It's strange, I... though. Why would such a thing? Just why? Why would such a thing? I don't can't really understand. I can say in all of my years that this is something that I have never come across and seems entirely unnatural or alien to me. I mean, this is a strange time. We There's a lich who lives in the middle of lake, thousands of years old, uh, you know, the Baron is uh, immortal. Dude, it's, nothing is normal now. Sorry, I don't have any idea what you're speaking of. It's, um, oh, he's it's just saying lots of weird shit keeps happening. To us in particular. Maybe it's us. No. Oh, it's definitely you. It was it's definitely you. Yeah. Th this is the second time today hmm. in the span of an hour that you guys have called me weird. I'm sorry I mean, to take offense Are you going to, to disagree? But like, it's not my fault. I didn't is say it was your fault. fault. It's not your fault. You're just weird. Well, it's better to be uh, well, you're weird. normal, right? Uh, oh, thank you. Unique. We all have our differences. That makes That's what makes us unique. Don't be ashamed of what makes you different. Embrace it. for sure is that the High Priestess will definitely want to know of this occurrence. Oh, Dorvin. Ron has idea. And you see one of the, um, one of the scouts comes up. Dorvin, I need you to take Audrey and go back to Ephreon and let the High Priestess know what has occurred here and the rest of us will continue. You see one of them say, of course, we're on our way, and they take off to the east. Where is uh, Ephrion, you say? It's to the east of the Imerlan River. Uh, luckily, the occurrences that have been happening to the villages being destroyed, burned, haven't made it east of the river, as far as I can tell. So Aramor is untouched as well as uh, Four Winters. So is it something like it's not destroying these larger establishments? That is quite an interesting idea. Uh, we know very little. Unfortunately, these attacks are quite spread apart. Uh, we may find one uh, for every several months time. Several months. Is it sort of like when you say every several months, how exact? Like how how much does it vary from time to time, the uh occurrences? I appreciate your your thought into this subject, but as far as we have known, we haven't find a pattern um through either the time it takes for each occurrence or if or any sort of geographical um, pattern either. Seemingly random, there, chaotic. Uh, no difference in the uh, seasons, you know, if it was a large animal, like a big, very large bear, there would be a very obvious lack of movement in dead of winter sort of thing, you know. Not that Nothing like seen. that. Mm. 
not two questions. I'm sure you know your stuff. I just, uh, I am very interested in solving mysteries. It is very, um, I don't wish to say fun because it is wrong word. How you say, uh, sort of, uh, intriguing. Eh. Perhaps. Ron has idea. Ron will message Risa about a uh, lightning bird. Oh, oh, good, good does. idea. Risa, and how are you going to get a missive to her? Oh, Ron has this stone, and you can talk to it. And oh, she will send you a stone. Message. Interesting. And she is, uh, she work at the library. Lots of books. She's very books. smart. Maybe she can help. Also kind of foolish sometimes. It just kind of depends. Very well. Mm. I think she's hiding something personally, but we'll see. Oh, no, I don't think so. Mm. Oh, just a voice in her head. Oh, yeah, that's right. She did. Well, she, but she told us about Anyways, not not in mixed company. We discuss later. It is all okay. good. All is Ron, well. Ron Nothing to see here. <laughs> Ron has limited words in sentence, so Ron has to count. Okay. Oh, okay. Hello, Risa. How are you? This is Ron. Do you know anything about lightning bird come out of rock body? Yes, good. We'll have like four words left. We miss you. <laughs> you wait for a moment. And then you hear um, a message back. Hey, Ron, it's me. Well, that sounds dumb. Um, I don't know rock birds. Oh, I found a little information on some followers of Sylvanas. They're called the Heralds. Cool. And it cuts off. Oh no, did she say? You got the look on your face, so we know she'll respond. Oh, so Risa says she does not know anything about rock birds, but she find out that the uh, Order of Sil Sylvanus is a uh, Ron's god. He's called the Heralds. But then message ran out, so Ron thinks she ran out of words. So maybe Ron will hear again. She can contact you still, right? You used your once per day, but she could still use her once per day. How's this work? I forget. Oh, she can use she can use magic, but um, last oh, time she can just used magic. Assassins came, and so oh. we're not use sending spell, but sending stone different. I don't know. Ron's but this is what I'm saying. She could use sending stone once more today, if oh. she finds out about big lightning bird. No, she cannot. Says oh, this to, voice in the back of my mind. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> once, once sending's been cast through the stones, uh, can't it's be. It's once per day on. for both. It's not twice per day mm -hmm. for each. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. Just so, at best we might hear back tomorrow. Uh, the yes. Rest of the maybe, yeah. maybe. Well, Ron has to mm -hmm. use tomorrow, then she can respond again. So you have to initiate. Oh, uh, Risa can too. Mm. Is anybody familiar with the heralds at all? Does that run? Uh, maybe. That's kind of your. Religion, uh, I guess. Can I do a religion it? as well? Ron's not the religion knowledge type, but we'll see what happens. There's. Next to um, no chance that so go ahead and roll, but there's next nine. to no chance that you'd know much of anything about this. So, so definitely not with a nine. No, I got a dirty 20, but I'm not trained in religion, so it's up yeah, to you. I wouldn't know anything. No, you wouldn't know.
I guess we're just going to be traveling after the short rest. There's something I want to talk to the group about, but I want to wait until like Siri and the others aren't listening. So it's up so to y'all if you want to go ahead and get traveling or if you have any other business that you want to take care of here. Oh, Ron feel better after a short rest. We can go now. Me too. I felt fine this whole time. <laughs> You're very lucky. <laughs> you just need oh, to stand uh... further away. <laughs> <laughs> it is not how it works. We do not have fire magic like you. I can't just like, oh, poof, poof, bam, shoot fire everywhere. Okay. Here, uh, I mean, it would be what, nice. Uh, Vin, you take Ron's hammer and shield and then Ron stand oh. back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like, like hold it this. and it like immediately falls to the ground and I'm just like <laughs> 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 Okay, now you now you train with Vin. Uh, Bryn. Bryn, show her how to block. Okay, ready? I'm going to hit you, get ready to block. And I, um like before you even um like have your fist up or anything, I'm just like uh like in fear, like <laughs> I'm going to pull out my hand axe and I make like I'm going to hit her. And I'm just going to stop at the very last minute. So it just like does it just like very close. So it doesn't. This is why I'm <laughs> far away. <laughs> it is OK. Everyone uh, plays to their strengths and Ron is big and tough and likes to carry hammers. So he just has to be up front. It is no problem. I will say this, though, Ron and Valkin, if you all could do me the favor of standing more closely to me in battle, there is this thing called a shield that I have trained very hard with to be able to protect my companions. In the north, it is called shield wall. It is where you have spears and you have shields and you stand near each other. And that way you do not get hit. But both of you are always running and jumping on top of giant birds. What do you have to say for yourself? Ron will try. No promise. Thank you, Ron. Promise to try. Yes. Well, can. I can't promise that. Look, it's not my fault, okay? You guys put me in these scenarios where I have nothing to do but jump on something. And then afterwards, when I'm almost dead, you guys get mad yeah. at me for jumping on something. No, afterwards, it. after you're almost dead, I come along and use up all of my healing tonic on you. This is what happens. It is not free, does not grow on trees. Well, oh. sort of the juniper berries, they actually do grow on trees, but it's not point. Do you want me to no. throw rocks at things or should I just... Oh. Like... In a defense for Valken, every time he jump on either a giant bird or a dragon or anything with wings, really, we, uh, we live. I can throw rocks. <laughs> Just saying, if you try to stick close to me, I can try to help you. Is all I'm saying. If it makes you feel better, I'll try. And also, I've been working on a little something something, little more of magic I did not know before. I've been practicing and I can uh, maybe heal you. But you have to be within, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, 60 f Wait. Oh, never mind. 60 feet is no problem. <laughs> Ooh, that would be really nice because you know me. I like to stand far away. Yeah, but you should not be getting hit if you're far away. Well, sometimes that happens. Jeez. If you're getting hit, you are doing it wrong. Listen, sometimes people will be like misty stepping next to me and I'm just like, no. It is, so. it is understood. I do not mean to complain. Everyone is doing a very good job. You are all one, uh, uh, very, very talented warriors. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know. Secret Anyways, leans, I have something to discuss. No, we're Secret not talking to them. to Valken and, and says in Elvish, Do you always bicker this off as much? In like a dysfunctional family of sorts. Uh, more well, or less. Interjects yeah. right away, Elvin. Like, no, we are a good family, you know. <laughs> I, it's we. This is definitely a thing. Whatever works. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, ready when you are. By the way, it's nice to speak in Elvish once in a while. Sort of flows off the tongue. It was my first language, so it's much easier for me to express myself in my beautiful language, so. Mm. Same. Which I think everyone understands except for Bryn. I don't know if Bryn knows Elvish. Because, uh, Vin, you got a helmet that lets you understand everything now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all of the things. But I also knew Elvish prior. There you go. All right, what's next, y'all? Guess we'll trek on and uh, keep our eyes to the sky. While we are trekking, though, I want to start a conversation out of the ear reach of anyone that's not our not in sweet justice. Group huddle time. Sure. So I've been thinking about uh, oh, shit. What was her name? Girl that did not like me. And, I forgot her name. Yeah, that one. Uh, I've been thinking about what she said and about how it relates to you, Vin. To me? What did I do? Well, you both play a game with uh, strange, strange items, no? Yeah, but I'm the only one that had the items, like, with me. Yeah, I think he let you keep because you did not pass test. So th she passed? Wh yes, because she passed and then they took her to, uh place to study more but for uh, whatever reason they did not want you uh, who doesn't want I, me I I'm, the, I'm the best who would not want me i don't mean it the uh, uh, fence i just mean that i think that uh, you know for some reason they don't want maybe because hmm. of where your magic comes from or type of magic or something i think test has to do with uh, the type of it's how they find uh, magic people yeah, well, he's stupid and doesn't I do not say he was not magic he's and obviously stupid. People he picks are dumb and run away and I don't whatever. I mean, do you see me traveling with her? No, I travel with you, so let's not fret it. But here, situation is the item you have. She does not have item. What was item she picked? It was uh, the fork. Small, um, tuning fork, which is the which... magic item of. Uh, Mage person, person. Finn knows from her, from her vision of what she saw on the table, re immediately recognized that as on a necklace around her neck um, when she was in the play. So I've been thinking, this is crazy. It is out there, I know, but listen, what if Baron is like, uh, he somehow figured out how to live forever and he is trying to find the soul or reincarnation of the magic person? in another person and that is test and those people they take back to uh uh the place and then if he once he's like eh, it's not you you can go wait are you saying that the person we ran into could have been the baron like like he's reincarnating himself into wait don't we know it was the person magical beings the person that tested you was the baron right hmm? yeah but i'm saying Annalise. Like, do you think Annalise is the Baron? No, I don't think she's anybody important. So, wait. Repeat what you're... I have a okay, pea brain. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so... Explain it to me like I'm There five. is Baron, and he is friends with magic person with t fork. Tuning fork. Okay. I'd necklace. In the play. The play they're the friends. People. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, they're friends. And friends. then he Got somehow it. is back in alive again after... Yeah, those are two friends, yeah. and he is here, but that's... Uh, that person not here. Okay. And then so he's looking for a person, maybe. Like a new person. Maybe, I don't know. So this is this is the new person that's coming in, and they're like, "Oh hi, I'm a new person," and you're like, "You're not the right person." How many of those toys do you have? I'm very well, amazed. Listen, I just <laughs> like to pick things up. Jeez. <laughs> so yeah, he's testing each person that shows magical capabilities to see if maybe they could be, and then if they pick a right answer, he's like, "Oh, it could be." You come back with us to salon. We will do more tests, and then uh, either they will succeed and stay, or they can leave. So what does is this he happening want while with? we're walking? This conversation? Yeah, 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 you're here. Okay, I just didn't know if we were moving or if we're. My thought was we were we fell back and we're kind of like conversing okay. quietly as we. You're so while this is going on, I'm just scanning scheming. the skies to make sure the thing is not coming back. You can call. Sure. Give me um, a perception roll. Feel free to continue. Hmm. 
That's a hefty D. What was that again? Best Perception. Deal. Perception. But uh, it is also... Oh, sorry. No, no giant uh, birds made of lightning and thunder that you can see in the sky. Okay. But it's also important to know that Vin, even though you are not accepted to go back and practice magic, he still chose to use you because we clearly were made to forget and yet quickly aligned paths with him again. Hmm. We were all there in vision, no? Yeah, you guys were at the table. Yes. My brain is hurting. Yes, it's very strange, Ooh. complicated magic shit. Did I have a, a gift from the guy? No. Oh. <laughs> that makes sense. No, we are not uh, magic casters. I mean, I know a little bit of magic, but uh, it's yeah, not the same. Yeah, but at least be nice. <laughs> I mean, do you want them to kidnap you, take you back to Salon, and uh, make well, you work for magic peoples? I have been practicing some new skills, so I wouldn't mind seeing him again. Well, how about this? We find him again, and we will make him test everybody. Mm. And then we will punch him in face. Good. What do you think, Ron? Hmm. Ron keeps trying to remember. But, but in uh, when we meet the Baron, and he make us forget, was the food good? Fun. Yeah. Tavern food. <clears throat> okay. Okay, let's go. <laughs> All right. Uh, I need one of you to roll a d8 for me if you're going to continue on after taking your uh, short respite to recover. What did I roll again for the rocket counter? I don't want to do that again. <laughs> six. A six. There is a little bit of wind that picks up in some light flurries, but nothing really that's going to hinder you any more than you already are. Tromp tromping through the forest. So you travel through out the rest of the day um, in sort of a southwesterly direction um, back towards Ron's village. And uh, it gets close to nightfall. And you know that you're about a day's travel. If you uh, maybe hoof it, um, the next day you might make it to your village towards the evening. Uh, it's a little more slow going because you're not on a road, it's snowing, you're in the middle of the forest, so you're not quite traveling as fast as you normally would. What How can you do? Out? What's that? How far are we out? Um, if you go quickly, uh, maybe a day, the next day you'd reach there by the evening. Oh. Mm. I want to oh, ask Vin to borrow her mask item while we're walking. Sorry. Yeah. And I like hand it over. I'll be investigating that. Yeah. Uh, Ron would rather not arrive at Ron's village at night, but during daybreak or daylight. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so you camping for the night here? Yeah. Uh, go ahead and uh, somebody make me a survival roll for uh, for camp. See if you can find a decent place. I can do that. Uh, 16. Yeah, you find a, a nice kind of uh, overhang where you can easily build um, some lean tours or what have you. Did I say lean tours, lean twos. <laughs> I don't know what the tour <laughs> is. Um, to find some shelter from the elements here. Um, it's it's chilly at the moment, um, but you're not. It's not really too bad, um, since you have your winter clothing, and um, easily enough you can rest for the evening. Um, 
the three remaining elves will take watch whenever you'd like them to um they share the same um ability as um falcon where they only need really half a night's sleep and then they're alert Uh, I would like to do a thing first. Go for it. While we are setting up camp and while I'm on my watch, I would like to be watching the they're all elves. I would like to be watching the elves. Okay. I just remembered this isn't going to work because there's probably speaking in Elvish. If any of them are speaking common, I would like to read their lips. Yeah. Um, more mm. often than not, when they're addressing each other and, and with tasks, it's mostly in Elvish. Yeah, um, I realize that is. But they do address plan. you all in common, just to make sure everyone can understand, so they don't seem like they're hiding. But sorry, <laughs> yep, <laughs> I know what you're okay. going for, but it's okay. It's okay. I got real excited and then remembered. Hey, you got the whole rest of the campaign. <laughs> um. So based on your on your question, yeah, they're all what else that are here? Um, they start gathering supplies. A couple. Um, well, Cedri asks you, did you all bring your own supplies or the food? Um, I'll be going hunting if you all require anything. Oh, uh, we have rations, but fresh food is always nice. Very well. So they go off, um, Cedri goes off and goes hunting uh, the two remaining at the camp who were Loris and Feralai are sort of uh, gathering wood or fire, um, standing watch. Anything else you'd like to do before we get into some watches for the evening? I just want to investigate that that uh, mask. Piece. Sure. Um, just go ahead and make an investigation check for me. Sorry, that would be a 13. Oh, great. You're looking at this mask, actively studying it. It seems just like a mundane mask it is nothing remarkable about it um it just looks like an alabaster is it mask. in the style of like a particular region or anything like that it's, it's, notice, it's noticeably mask with eyes cut out yep almost featureless um and it's made of Porcelain? Yep. Porcelain. I said alabaster is a description of color, but that doesn't make sense for it to be made of alabaster. But. I want to break it, but I think Vish would get mad at me. Don't you dare break it. I'll just give it back to her. Uh, but DM, and just you don't have to answer this if I'm if I'm reaching, but it would, but it, would it be based on my previous theory? Like my assumption is that this is a throwaway item. So something that could be obtained cheaply and you wouldn't care if you lose it. There's nothing that would be contrary to that. No, nope. looks like a plain mask. All right, with that, I would like to take first watch, please. Sure. Who else would like to take a uh, first watch? Um, I'll, I'll take first watch. And All I would right. like to do a, a little thing on my watch as well. Um, was Ron, did you say you're gonna take first watch as well? Uh, I was, but I could, I could go to second. Okay. Uh, Sudri comes back with five pounds of food. Um, so enough for the three of them and then, um, each of you. Sweet. Um, but if I recall correctly, uh, Vin doesn't really have a problem finding food mm -hmm. based on yeah. her, on her background. So. have to go out and, and find it so mm -hmm. okay 
first watch. Give me some uh, perception rolls. Sixteen. Uh, fifteen. Do I need to tell you my passive at this point? Since it's increased. Okay. Not at this point. Um. So for this particular evening, you are, um, both Bryn and Valken are just. Doing the best they can, keeping watch for the rest of the camp while the others sleep. Um, nothing really out of the ordinary that happens on this night. Anything you'd like to do? And I think that Valken, you had something you wanted to do on the watch. Yeah, while we're sitting down by the fire, I'm going to uh, take out my sword, okay. uh, unsheathe it, and just kind of look at it as the fire kind of reflects on it then I'm gonna oh, are you paying attention to what I'm doing Bryn um I now have a I would just like everyone in the room to know that I now have a passive perception of 18 so yeah I know what you're doing Bam. <laughs> okay so I, I kind of am looking over the sword and then I have a feeling that probably being watched by somebody, I just turn to Brennan and be like, I'm gonna do something. Just know I'm not completely crazy, okay? Brennan just kind of shrugs like... Okay, I'm going to run my hand across the blade so that it makes me bleed. Okay. And I'm gonna... okay, Bryn kind of sits up a little at that. <laughs> and but I don't I'm gonna... run over. I'm you just going to be me. like, uh, yo, sword, are you there? You wait for a long moment as you run the sword across your hand, blood's trickling down from your palm as Bryn sort of sits up and looks at you. And you wait long enough to where you think to yourself, this is, this is silly. I don't know what I'm doing. But at about that long, awkward pause, uh, you hear a voice in your head. He speaks. Uh, did I need to do the blood thing? That's up to Make you. Make this happen. You don't, you're not woken up by blood or... Listen, I don't know how you work. Okay. Uh... Uh, do you have a name? Ah, uh, yes. Many, many names. I believe what you know me as the Sword of a Thousand Truths. A thousand battles. A thousand victories. A thousand W's, yes. Yeah. Uh, is there any other... Just, is this a title? Is this a... It's an awfully weird name if it's an actual. And I, I guess I just want to know more about you. If that's a. Since we we become friend? Question mark. Is it that you would like to know? Were you always a sword? Or are you the soul of somebody trapped inside the blade? Ah, a very interesting question. What do you think? Well, to be honest, I'm a little bit of an idiot when it comes to anything magic, so... I would say something that was maybe formerly alive that's now trapped inside an object. Quite an postulation, not too far from the truth. No, I have not always been a sword. Hmm. 
Okay. Getting somewhere. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I ever told you my name. It's Falcon. Nice to meet you. Oh, I know your name. Oh, good. Um, well, that saves me some time. Uh, so, so just to be clear, I don't need to slice my hand if I have questions for you. Because that kind of hurt. Makes it very interesting, though, doesn't it? Are you drinking the energy or blood of the things that I fight? How does this work? No, that would be ridiculous. Okay, good. Good to know that... Okay, okay. That's great. So, why exactly are you interested in things I kill? Why do you like it? Does it make you stronger? I have been made into a sword, a tool for one particular purpose. Death. Killing. Defeating one's opponents. Swords do that? Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh... Hmm. Do you remember your previous users, by chance? Yes. Interesting. Um... Do you recall someone named Gin? Did I go on to briefly describe what he looked like? Oh, I know your sensei. I believe you saw in the book as well, didn't you? Yeah, quite the surprise, actually. Is it a surprise that perhaps he wielded me as a tool, an implement, and now, by happenstance, I'm now in your hands? Initially, yeah, I thought that was kind of strange, but now you make it seem like it was something that was inevitable, so... I guess... Listen, he was not somebody that seemed like the murderous type. And are you? Um, do I murder? No. Have you ever? No. How many battles have you won? How many enemies have you defeated? How many enemies have you killed? Ooh, that's... Ooh. Um... Yeah, I've never put a number to it. Um, probably a lot. Yeah, I probably killed a lot by now. Yeah, mostly out of self-defense, though. If we're being totally clear here, if this was a, if you're the judge and I'm being tried, it was all self-defense. I swear. Self-defense, necessity, desire, all the same to me. Am I hearing one side of this conversation? Yes. <laughs> well, so the yeah. part where Valkan's trying to like clearly like, like I don't know how many I've killed. I'm just kind of like, sitting there with the sword, uh, and that's why I said to you, I was like, I'm going to do something. I'm not crazy, and I just started. I'm hearing you. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm not interrupting, but I am starting to figure out if I can remember how many people you've killed. <laughs> and he knows you're listening. Well, um, it's getting kind of late in my watch. It's almost over. Um, I, I've asked this twice now, but just to be crystal clear, because I don't think you've made it quite certain, I don't have to bleed myself, right? I want to talk to you again. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Yeah, okay. Uh... Have a nice sleep. I don't sleep. Have a nice... brief not killing time, and I'll cheat the sword. <laughs> Very well. Oh. Well, I learned a few things. Kind well, of. that was something. 
Yeah, I bet that looked really crazy. Uh, it looked I pretty promise, crazy. I promise there's actually a voice inside this thing. And it talks to me sometimes. Yeah. There's I mean, no problem. I mean, I wish it didn't kind of. We hang out with Vin all day and she's got multiple personalities that aren't even in the same body. So, you know. What is crazy? I, uh. I don't mess with these things usually. I've never come across a cursed object like this. Kind of, uh, a little bit scary. Now my hand hurts, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, here, let me, um, and I'm gonna use my medical skills to just give you a little band aid situation. It's not like he sliced through his hand or anything. Just, maybe oh, assuming it was superficial. Do... Yeah, maybe don't do it that way cost, next time. Uh, uh, some blood to run on the sword. I really wish you would have told me if I needed to do that. You didn't, didn't really, uh... And maybe next time try without doing that first, you know. Okay. Shall we wake the other? Yeah, I'm getting pretty tired. Okay. Yep, yeah, you can wake the others and then, uh... Um... For the remainder of the... Second watch, the other two, um, elves sort of awaken in the middle when you are conversing. Continue to keep watch. Um, go over to Vin and to Ron for your watch. Anything you'd like to do? Uh, not I. Unless there's anything you want to talk about, Ron. Nice. Oh, um, how much do you know about uh, fishing, Vin? Uh, and I just like stand there or like sit there agape, like, hmm. I don't know. If I've ever fished, I mean, I I'm a survival person, but I, have I fished? Let's yeah, just uh, say I know nothing about fishing. Okay, it is uh, it is not like uh, casting fireball in the water and making fish float to surface, but uh, oh, that's a good idea. Well, I have heard of but people Iran throwing TNT time. in time. water. Next okay. time we go to lake or river, Ron will show you. All right, yeah, deal. Is there anything I can show you? Hmm. I, Ron does not know. Hmm. Well, think about so, it. Okay. Maybe, maybe I can show you how to start a fire. Like, not without, like, without magic, you know, just the... The regular old way. I'm sure you okay. know how to do that. Yes, but uh, maybe you have a different method. Because in Ron's village, we have, you know, everyone has their own method. But sometimes True. I see people, Ron sees people with magnifying glass and they hold the sun and then they uh, burn ants. It's the same thing. Burning ants? Yeah. But you're you're just you're just killing them just for fun. No, Ron does not. But Ron has seen, you know, children in uh, the city. Mm, okay. All right. Well, don't. I, I better not see you doing that. Oh, Ron would not do such. Thing. But ants suck. Ron hates ants. What? What did the ants ever do to you? They get everywhere. They get in the food and uh, in the pantry. If you leave food out and uh, it. You know, and then they get to places where you don't want ants to be. It's terrible. Mm. Yes. I guess you just gotta put your stuff away better and... <sighs> Anywho, if you showed me how to fish, I'll show you how to make a fire uh, my way without the harm of ants being just no, no ant harm. No animal harm, really. Okay, deal deal the super watch is uneventful and you make it to the next day 
I'm back on the trail for Ron's village. So you spend, I understand, another day traveling, um, not pushing it so you'll get there on uh, the next morning. Um, so you can easily find another uh, spot to rest for the next evening um, and make it through to the next day if you'd like, unless there's anything you all would like to do. No. So you know that you are now about a couple hours away from your village, Ron. You know this part of the forest. You remember this particular area um, many times where you would go out to hunt or to gather food or to get supplies for the rest of, of your village known to you as home. And as you get closer and uh, closer to your village out of the corner of your eye Bryn you see the slender shape sort of move from your peripheral and, and seemingly disappear like Slenderman mm, couldn't really tell it was pretty quick humanoid humanoid not one of the elves. No. I okay. didn't see it. Um, I'll kind of like start actively looking around to see if I can see it. As you're sort of looking. And I want to reach out and grab the arm of whichever of these fine folks is next to me. Uh, let's see. Just real nice. Then. You just feel Brynn kind of grab your arm, but when you look at her, she's looking like off among the trees. I like put my hand in front of her face and I'm like, Earth to Bryn. Oh, no. There's someone out there. You see it again in the other corner of your eye, seemingly stepping on the other side behind a tree and then on. No, they're over there now. Who? What? There's a figure, a shadowy figure, I don't know. Oh my god, hold on. Oh, what is happening? There's something on. Uh, Bryn sees a shadowy figure in the distance, but I don't, I don't see them. Does someone else with better vision maybe see them? I, I don't know, I don't, I don't see anything out over there. Yo, that was I so my elf eyes. creepy. Oh, Max, you said that and a giant dog was outside my window. I'm like, not even kidding. Right when you said someone was watching us. Whoa. That's why the dogs are freaking out. <laughs> oh my God, they're freaking out. That was so crazy. <laughs> Go for it. Can I help on realities, Mark? Max? <laughs> I got a, You're in the uh, Matrix. Uh, was it 19 perception? So, with your 19 perception, as you're sort of looking, you see at the corner of your eye too, someone walking behind a tree and seemingly disappearing. And you hear just a, almost like a warm laughter echoing through the forest <laughs> uh, and then gone uh, laughter oh my yeah. god only Ron here or did we all hear it you all heard it at this point since you're all are, are kind of high on alert Ron is it was it known that they would frequent these woods to Ron's memory you um your people have quite a strong tie to the Fae so it's not unheard of Make a nature check for me. Got it. But with advantage since uh, you're from these parts. Uh, 16. Oh, don't mind the wild dogs. Uh, they frequent these woods. So, yeah, I'm going to try to quietly tell them about the figure that I saw both times and I'm going to keep looking. In the back of your mind, you're thinking 
How could someone walk behind a tree and then vanish? And then it clicks in your mind. They're not walking behind the tree. They're walking into the tree and vanishing. So the first thought that comes to your mind is Dryad, maybe? Oh, could be Dryad. Could be Druids. Should I yell at them? Um, no. No. And behind you, Ron, seemingly coming from a tree, um, you hear, careful now. I haven't seen one of you here in a while. <laughs> and then sort of echoes away. Did we all hear that? Yeah. I guess Ron will start speaking louder. You know this one? Do you remember? From the other side of where you are, and you all see a slender humanoid figure seemingly step out of a tree. Um, very slender, um, feminine form. Uh, covered with leafless branches and on the sword but not playing it out yet do i, I recognize this you. figure i don't know you either that makes two of us i know we've of your people at least and points to ron and then points to vin there is something peculiar about you, too, isn't there? Same goes for you, lady who just walked out of a tree. I'm no lady, I'm a dryad, of course. You may call me Viola. What well, do you some of want? Me have affinity to you. What color are her eyes? They're a very um, pale blue. Now, what brings you to this part of the forest, Fearbold? This one is returning to home, to the village that was destroyed five years ago. I thought there were none of you left shame really uh, this one has returned in search of answers for the beast that destroyed the village interesting be careful it's very dangerous around here now not like you remember what has changed the forest is sick does it still burn no. What is this sickness? Something else, something unnatural, rotting it from the inside. I tend to stay away. Were you in these woods five years ago? No, not particularly. Why? This one is looking for the beast that uh, potentially makes these woods sick. Perhaps you have come across uh, burrows or underground caverns that are filled with forge marks. I haven't seen anything in particular. Of course, I tend to stay away from most civilization if I can help it. All the Philbogs are kind to my people. Mostly. Wait, for folks still roam these woods? I meant previously. Do you know what's causing the sickness, the, uh, the source, the location? Not particularly. Sort of in the, well, the direction you're heading. I don't go much further than this. We can 
figure out what is causing the sickness, uh, we should, we will remove it. Well, that would be very nice of you. How do you intend on doing that? This one does not know until we get there, unless you have more information to share. No, I didn't stay around long enough. The whatever's rotting or making the trees sick is not something that I really want to but to me, so. Have your kin been afflicted by such illness? <laughs> not that I'm aware of, but I don't see too many of my other sisters around. Do you, do you happen to know anyone who can tell us more? suppose I'm your best bet, since this is really my area of the forest, but... Well, this one will humbly request passage through your area, then. Well, if your intent is to make this area a little more hospitable to me, then by all means. You know the rules, or you should. This one does, but this is also once called home. And her sort of pale, light blue eyes just sort of look at Vin. Um, she just sort of reaches out her arm. Um, her skin is sort of a, a, a grayish green, but where you would normally expect to see leaves, it's just leafless branches covering. Uh, almost so more akin to the season around you. Um, and she just sort of reaches out and then just touches Vin on the nose. You are an interesting one. I haven't seen one like you before. What does that mean? Does I like wince at like, does like leave coming at me? <laughs> it's basically like, a, it's just a normal hand, but just covered in like, branches around. So it's not like a leaf hand, it's just like, no. like if it was clothes, the clothes were made of leaves. Mm-hmm. No difference. Uh, Viola, what, what do you see when you look at this one? Other Faye has also mentioned such things. Well, she's like me, but not me. In what way? Well, you're also like me, but not very much, very distant. Your people. Ah, and she sort of points her slender finger much closer. She is closer to you than this one would be to you? Oh, yes. Very much so. Have you seen others? I knew it. Like her? Identical? There's more of you. How many more? What? More of me? From the Fae. Listen. But that is no. I, I am one of a kind. There is only one of me, but there are imitation me's that are trying to be me, that say they're me, but they're not me because I'm me. It's a really long story. I don't really understand any of it. I'll Sounds be honest like with it. you. Well, if I were to see another you. Oh, it's best you stay away. Dangerous. Mm -hmm. Very strong and uh, out for blood. Well, not much blood you'll get from me. You don't die? Of course I can, but she raises her arms and looks at sort of the wood kind of covering her, most of her body. It's complicated. I would be very concerned if you see another me just because we really like fire and you're seemingly made of wood. So that her, her brow instantly furrows and her eyes get cold. 
best not to do that around here then. Not me. I'm just saying. There's. Oh, you have no way for this one. Do not. She is under yeah. my watch. It's complicated. Do you show love for the Oak Father? I mean, I know who he is. Do you know who his heralds are? Or of them? This one would like to seek knowledge. Lots of people pray to the Oak Father revere him in, in some way more so up here than I would assume in the wild in the wilds I was gonna describe like the tree he saw in his vision and then like the altarpiece in the center if Yolo knows anything of this no sounds like an interesting place but know where I've been I have things to do and you all are, well, a little boring now, unfortunately. Good to see you though, glad that you're not all dead. Looks at you, Ron. And looks to Vin, I'll keep an eye out for you. And also not you. That makes sense. I and she guess? sort of steps backward and disappears into a tree. What were the, the scouts doing when this was happening? Um, basically holding their bows at the ready and seeing what the fuck was going to happen here. <laughs> okay, we can uh, proceed. Ron, Try what was that? Uh, it's uh, been a long time since Ron and Frobox have inhabited this village, so perhaps uh, the Fae has uh, reclaimed. So that's not normal to, to your area. It's not like a welcoming party. Uh, usually interacting with Faye is dangerous, but we share a common interest, so I believe she will uh, leave us alone. Okay. But the sickening of force concerns Ron very much, as well as being so close to village. Tough. Maybe it's uh, related, you know? Mm. So before you uh, proceed into Ron's village, we're going to take our break. So make sure to stretch, get some snacks uh, and some beverages, stretch your appendages, and we'll be right back here in a few um, at Ron's village. Cheeseburger so. time. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you here in a bit. <laughs> be right back. BRB. Yep. Yes. <laughs> 